Toyota Avalon Part 2. People that know me on YouTube know me for Nissan, or rather Infinity vehicles to be more accurate, but every once in a while I venture into other brands and models. This one here is a 2008 Toyota Avalon, and today's video is going to be on front brakes, brake pads, and brake rotors. Um, I've been making videos that are usually how-tos, sometimes I discuss features and things like that, but over time I've been feeling like maybe those might be a little, I don't want to say vague, but maybe not, I don't want to say misleading either, but when I condense a one hour job into a 30 minute video and I upload it on YouTube, Yes, it's a good guide for people that like to, or the pe for people that can actually read pre, you know, look into that and extrapolate the instructions into real work. But I got inspired recently to make real-time videos. So this video, exactly as it's recorded, is going to be uploaded onto YouTube. No edits at all. So um, being that it's cold, if you hear me, you know, I guess shivering or something <laughs> it's allergy season if I breathe funny you're gonna hear it you know so I wanted to upload a video that shows you what the work is gonna be like so if it takes me if it's supposed to take me 30 minutes but it ends up taking me 45 minutes it will all be in the video this job right here front brakes on the 2008 Avalon I estimate 45 minutes when you're doing it but because I'll be doing it for uh, with intention to upload it, it's going to take uh, a, a lot longer actually. There'll be time to be taken into account for speaking and talking to the camera. And two, I'll be doing things to show the camera. If I were just working, it would go faster. So that's something I'd like to say right off the bat. In case this video ends up being like an hour and a half or two hours long, just so you know, it doesn't typically take that long. Okay, so that's the one thing. Um, so I'll be working on the front one, and first thing I should do, for the sake of safety, gloves, you know, kind of protect your hands. I have to say this, I, I would love to call out the torque values and things like that while I work on these brakes, but as I mentioned, I am more familiar with the Nissan and Infinity brand and brands and I don't know too much of the technical specs about uh, these Toyotas. However, I think I've gotten feedback over time that maybe people like the methods I do things, the way I teach things. So I figured, well, let me just record this. It's not, I'm not saying it's gonna be the best method. Um, the, there are people who will be able to do it faster than me. Some will do it slower than me maybe more perfect than me, whatever it is, but this is just sharing the way I'm going to do the project. So um, the goal for today, let me, I guess I could go back and I'll just talk as I go through the pro process. Uh, I will call out tool sizes whenever I use them. Um, lug nuts, before even raising the vehicle, what I'd love to do is loosen the lug nuts. Yes, it is a front wheel drive vehicle, but I don't like putting all that excess and necessary stress on, on the drivetrain. Although you'd think a car can handle, the drivetrain can handle way more force than a human being can put with their hands, right? So this is a 21 millimeter socket and it might look a little odd because it's actually, I bought it from AutoZone. This one here, it's made for, for wheels. Not just a standard thick socket. It's got this plastic sleeve to protect your wheel as best as you can, I guess. And as I said, it looks a little different than your standard sockets. I hope the light's working. The focus will be here, I'll be zooming in, but I just wanted to cover that while I'm here. So now that that's been loosened, not all the way, just maybe one turn, just to make sure that it broke loose, I'll go ahead and jack and secure the vehicle. Trip 
Christian almost fell over there. I was gonna show that. So the way I choose to do this, I raise the, the vehicle, raise both, both wheels off the ground using the jack over there. And these are things I'll talk about in, in future videos. Just wanted to kinda touch on that for now. So let's go ahead and remove the wheel completely. I have a power tool over here. I don't use it for torque. It's just to save me from the repetitive motion of having to, you know, work my wrist. And I'm, I'm just too trained. It's too ingrained in me to always do the skip one method. But you'll notice that Toyota wheels are very, very hub centric. So you have these lug nuts mag style lug nuts but then the wheel is pretty much holding itself because of the the hub on the bearing which is you know it's different I guess coming um, from the Nissan side but it works oh yeah so we're gonna find it so it's not gonna come off easy so I kick uh, kick the top sometimes oh that worked this to the back I'm sending the wheel back because I'll be taking this opportunity to do a wheel uh, tire rotation as well so let me zoom in a little close this is your brake caliper this is your brake rotor as you can see there's a little bit of corrosion on it. Well, more than a little bit. Both wheels are off the ground, that's why I can turn this. I was making sure that when I kicked the wheel off, it did not dent the dust shield and end up causing scraping. You know, sometimes it's an easy thing to deal with, but you don't want to hear that noise right after uh, replacing your brakes. So what I'm going to do at this point is I need this to uh, face this way. I need to turn the wheel so that instruction will be a little more relevant. But pretty much you have your brake rotor here. You have your brake caliper. This is called the caliper bracket. And you'll see, I'll explain it in a little bit. Let me just turn the car on just enough to turn the wheel. I'll uh, turn the key to the second position. So evidently, it moves with way less freedom when you turn it to the right side, something I probably need to look into. That is compared to when you turn it to the left side. But the good thing is that the steering wheel did not lock, so I can still do this. Well, I thought I could. I'm going to have to get a look creative, maybe bring the uh, camera a little closer. Let me find a way to, uh, I'll see if I can lock it this way because I need this to be as convenient as possible. You know what? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to lower this so that the other wheel is on the ground and that way it's going to have resistance. When I turn it, it's not going to want to go back to home position because this, that's where it's heading to. So I guess some learning there, right? Because this one doesn't want to lock.
apparently that was not enough so let me lower it even further There you go, that's more like it. I'm sorry for the for the hesitation or for the troubles of hands turning off, but pretty soon hopefully we get a pretty pretty good video out of this. Make sure I hook up my power. Okay, and I'll do my best to call out everything I work with that I find relevant. This in here is a Milwaukee well, light. What's the model number? Not uh, the serial number, but what's the model number? Well, it says LED stick light. How's that? And it's it's the one that usually has a hook here up top. here on the side as well it's pretty cool for like under under hood work because it can you know just use use this to hang on the latch so it's got two two light levels and they use the top the highest illumination level for this okay so let's make sure that the video can actually capture what we're trying to do here I need to get real close Uh, here it is. This is your brake caliper, again bracket, rotor, you've seen that. So uh, what I want to do right now is uh, work, just keep working as fast as I can and call out the tools I'll be using as I use them. And I'll also do my best to call out the alternatives. So if you, all you wanted to do was replace your brakes, excuse me, your brake pads, um, the caliper is what you need to loosen. You can do both the top and the bottom bolt. This one here, 14 millimeters. I use gear, oh, are they yeah, the Duralast. Gear wrench is the generic name for these, but they're ratcheting wrenches. So I got some from AutoZone, and they are open end, open on one end, close on the other. I do have different sets, some of which have like different sizes, you know, on on, diff on each end. But this one here, it's pretty cool. I like the Duralast brand because supposedly you get lifetime warranty. So I've broken some tools, including some of these live videos. So I'll be going over there. So if all you wanted to do was replace the brake pads, it's pretty easy. I just, you know, I loosen the top and the bottom. However, all you need to do, the front brakes of the Avalon are pretty big, so I can't really move the caliper in and out that much, but swing it up, upwards. I need to punch it in, then back out. Oh, there you go. All right, so it worked to my advantage because I had done this as well, the top one. So you can just swing it up and remove your brake pads. To remove your brake pads, remove these retaining clips over here. These are spring back clips. They're the ones that, you know, after your piston, had, your piston and the brake uh, caliper have done the thing to bring the pads together to get friction against the rotor. those spring back out. It's not moving very well right now because of corrosion and all that. If you wanted to remove them, all you have to do is this right here. Just basically remove the clips, pull this out, pull that out, and replace whatever you need to. For the sake of ins instruction, I'm gonna go a little further with, with this process. Let me zoom out a little more. Can you see this? Yeah. 
So I'm going to go uh, a few extra steps because not only that, usually what I like to do, do you see this motion right here? Yeah, your brake caliper has to be able to slide. So you've got a top slide pin and a bottom slide pin or guide pin as they usually call sometimes. And these ones move, which is great, but I usually like to check and make sure that everything is 100% good with those. So I take them out, lubricate them again, lubricate them, I guess, and reinstall them. And for that, I usually need to take off the whole bracket. Makes it easier for cleaning purposes as well. So let's, let's do that. You can let it swing or hang down there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these. Again, 14. And for this one, I think I need to actually move back further so you can see. You can put it on the caliper, but since I on the on the rotor, but since I intend to remove the rotor as well, I'm gonna do this and hang it up here. Can you see that? This is on the on the spring part. Right there, holds itself. That's great. So let that just sit up there, don't damage it, make sure you don't kink the hose over here. Um, it's gonna be a pain to have to replace those parts. Make sure you don't um, bend it in any extreme angles either, you know? But I just hand thread this back in here for the sake of, I guess, location. I don't want to lose anything. All right, so this is fine. This is all one unit. Uh, the other part, you've got two bolts over here. One, hopefully it's a little more visible, and I'll keep moving the camera as much as I need to to do, you know, to do my best to show the parts I'm talking about. So here's one. There's another one right here. I don't know how visible that is from from that angle, but I guarantee you, best of my efforts over here. So these are actually 17 millimeter bolts in the front of the Avalon. So let me get my 17 ready. That's it. There's a 19. 17, there you go. And I use the breaker bar, or more accurately described as a, it is a breaker bar, but it ratchets, right? And it also swivels. In, it's in one axis, but still, I'll take that. Make sure it's in the breaking loose direction, loosening direction. And once again, I don't, do not 100% know the torque value to, to uh, install them to, but um, working on cars over a long time, um, you should use a torque wrench on the way back in, by the way, but working on cars over a long time, I've gotten my wrist pretty well calibrated to torque values, and it also involves a little bit of math and some assumptions. Assumptions are always big in engineering. And I guess there's always a feel. How much force did it take me to unfasten something? So yeah, I'll kind of estimate the same uh, amount of force. And usually I do my best to use just one hand, you know? This can kind of fake, uh, give me wrong, erratic readings. I'm not trying to like, <laughs> try to hit uh, whatever, you know, make it seem like you should definitely shouldn't use a torque wrench. It's just that, well, what's the purpose of a torque wrench right now if I don't know the values? Some people go just tight as crap, you know, and I guess that's an option too, but that's not what I'm doing today. So make sure this is loosen as well. And I like to take whatever opportunities I can get to remind people that when it comes to something like these bolts over here, I've had bad luck in the past where I, I thought I had uh, threaded them in well enough, then went in with the tool and ended up uh, cross-threading them on the bracket. It was, uh, the bracket was for a car that I could not really get on AutoZone. It was like uh, an Ultima coupe. So I, I needed to kind of hustle hard to, to get that. So here it is. Let me, I guess, move the light again. It's gonna be a little dense. Working, working at night comes with such challenges. All right, so this is it. 
and this is where things bolt through. So this is this is the threaded part, threads onto the bracket itself, but just goes through here, right? Just clear through here. Hopefully that's visible. All right, so with this out, what I'm gonna do is this. Look at the thickness. It's not too bad. Wearing was even. Thank you know, thanks to the spring back clips. I've seen I've seen different designs of um, calipers or caliper brackets and different ways to spread the pads apart. But this one's pretty good. Toyota's done a pretty good thing with with the Avalon design, honestly. So just look at what you have. You know, it does have a top and bottom, but the way this one looks, it looks like it's the same one as the left side, just flipped the other way, right? So this is installed this way. On the left side, imagine it's just going to be installed this way. <laughs> looks pretty similar to me. And one way to, um, well, let's take the calipers, uh, the pads off. It said, all you have to do is remove these clips. And for that, I guess a flathead. They're not as hard on the way in, by the way, but on the way out, I, yeah, there you go. I was going to say, if you didn't want to do that, you could just kind of leave them in there and just push to the side. All right. So that kind of does it. Push that on as well. whatever methods you want to use. So the goal, as you can see the feature here and another one here, just, and you can see this and that, right? Just line them up and push. That is the, the most simplistic way of explaining what's happening here. If I can actually get it in. And I'll, I'll try my best to go into some detail to show what actually goes on. Yeah, lubrication's kind of important. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll save the fight for when I'll be fully installing it. But you do have these springs over here, spring clips, and that's what these slide on, the pads, right? Just making sure I'm zoomed out as, as well as far as possible. Okay. So, you do have the piston side, which is on the inside. You have this other side on the outside. Get my clips. Nice. Put it right here, put them right here because it can be kind of easy to forget. Look at the pads. Well, this one here had a clip that it broke off. Yeah, broke off. But this right here is called the wear indicator. It's supposed to stick out, protrude far enough that when this wear material um, thins out enough, you'll have this metal tab scratching your rotor and that makes an, a horrible, horrible uh, screeching noise. It seems like it broke off on the other side as well. So both pads have it, but the other way you do in this car, well, I'll have to show you at the very end when I put it back together, how you check your pads. Usually some of them have like a window here and in those cars, the window's usually wide enough that you can actually see the pads. But in the Avalon, the window's off, off to the, uh, to the inside. So all you can check is actually the rotor. And it's kind of useless. So what I do is I check the pads through here. All right? The gap between this, this gap right here. This is how I check my pads, this gap at the top right here. Okay, but not very important for what you're trying to do right now because I had already committed. Thing is, when your rotors are so worn, and we'll, we'll examine this in a little closer, 
you shouldn't just replace the pads because the rotors are going to eat those pads and likewise when you have bad pads you know replace just you know what I'm saying either you know vice versa shouldn't just replace if everything is so grooved don't just replace the rotor because the pads your know, old pads are going to damage your new rotors and the other way is true if you just replace the pads um, if you just replace the, the rotor the pads are going to chew the rotor if you replace just the pads the old rotor since that's usually harder is going to chew your new pads okay fumbling it I hope I made my point there <laughs> okay so we'll hold on to these for now I'll clean up later we'll talk about it so right now what I need to do or what I'd like to do is there's my trash can I'll do cleanup and maybe I'll yeah I might raise this one here As I said, we'll do whatever we can to, to show a good video. <laughs> Is that really working? Maybe. No, that's not going to work. I'll, I'll just set this down and kind of explain what I'm cleaning, I guess. You know what? No, I got this. There you go, trash can, and then I'll speak about what I'm doing. My mind seems to work right. Almost fell. I'll be right back. I just noticed that I hadn't uh, plugged in my charger for the for the camera and obviously that's gonna work against my whole goal of not having to record two videos and whatever stitch videos together okay so here it is uh, slide pins I'd like to kind of pay some you know give some attention to this so this is how you install it onto the car this is the top this is the bottom okay you have the boots and as I said thankfully these are still moving and so does this one here but sometimes if your boots rip you end up in a situation with corrosion in here and these just freeze in there sometimes people force them out and send them down and lube them again but sometimes you just have to buy new ones and they could be something like 20 bucks so let's just pull this out this rubber is kind of old here let me pull it this one is the top one right the one with the uh with the letters and engraving over here that is the top one right kind of as i said could get a little confusing but we'll just work with that engraving is a top well actually let me just pull this boot first all right so paper towels i'm gonna to need paper towels as well at some points i'm gonna use way more than others but so the grease is kind of it's black but that doesn't mean it's bad it's just these pins don't look brand new but they don't look too horrible either i will clean them with chemical in a bit okay so that's the first one and i'll remove the boot this is because i've got replacement boots so if if your stuff is still good and you don't have replacements just let it be right okay here's the bottom one right so you were able to see the top one is just a metal rod right the bottom one however look at that it does have something a little extra and the extra thing is it's got a rubber I call it a collar usually and this one for whatever reason most vehicles most calipers they have that at the bottom 
right? So I'll remove the boot. This, the boot is the same one as the one up top. And in case you got a replacement and you were curious, this one here, the, like the, what I call it, um, it's not machine being rubber, but the sharper features usually have to go into this, uh, be received into the caliper bracket. The top is just more of a sleeve, right? We'll, we'll talk about that whenever you get a new one. Actually, with a new one, it's a little more evident. So here, this is what the lower pin looks like. Pay attention to that. This rubber piece over here, this one's not too hard to remove. Some of them are way harder to remove, um, way longer, you know, it just depends. But as you can see, this one is machined to, to have a, a reduction in diameter over there, right? So that's why I've been referring to that as a collar area. I will chemical clean them. Just wanted to take that out for now. The other thing, so that's that's for the slide pins. The other thing with these is that you have um, what they call them, slide clips, brackets, uh, noise abutment clips. These being the, the machined, uh, you know, smoother than the cast material you see here, they're supposed to allow the the pads to slide back and forth on them. So, and as you know, as you can see here, for them being shaped like this, being a little narrower here, they would naturally try to push this, uh, the pads back out. So pay attention to these, take a picture if you want to. Um, I guess I will as well, might as well. Okay, what's happening with my phone? Suddenly my phone tells me I got zero battery. It's weird. There. I did have charge with the what in the world's going on with the phone. Okay, so just take a mental note of that. And if you're doing the project, just remember that the insides are narrow, right? And the bending and all the other action is on the outside. And these ones are separate. Sometimes you get some that, you know, a whole clip that goes from side to side. This one has four different, four separate clips, like this, all right? And we're going to replace these, don't worry. I made sure that before taking them off, well, you could clean them if you wanted, but the pads that I buy usually come with replacements. So maybe at some point we'll start talking about replacement parts. I don't throw them away yet. I'm not going to put them in the trash. I'll actually just set them off to the side just in case you end up having to eat crow and go backwards. So for this part right here, because I'm, I'm not done with the rotor yet, I'll get to the rotor, but what I like to do, you saw the, the loop, right? There was grease on the slide pins. So I try to clean them up. You guys might be missing out on this. I'm sure I can do it with my left hand. I am relatively ambidextrous. This is just brake clean. Um, this is 3M brake clean. I, I did not buy this. It came with the house, but I do have other brands. I don't really care, I guess, about brand name Brake Clean. This is, well, Brake Clean branded, Brake Cleaner. I just buy this from AutoZone. I've also bought the AutoZone brand. It, to me, it's just a chemical at that point, you know. But I bet some other companies will sell you the brand name if you wanted to. So what I do, because of that, as you've seen what's going on over there, sometimes I just send in brake clean, just fill it up and let it sit for a while. Hopefully it will chemically work on the grease, the grease will float. There you go. So I just, I like to do this ahead of, uh, um, ahead of everything else and just set it down somewhere. 
And as I said, let just time be your friend with this. I need to get creative to prevent it from from falling over. All right, so I'll grab the, the camera again. Kinda need to show you two or three different things going on here. All right, so I guess previously I could have just gone for the rotor and I'll mention this part again because it might explain why I have a hammer in my toolbox or a mallet. So in the Nissan world, if you want to take off your rotor, back a little bit, if you want to take off your rotor, usually you don't really have too many choices, at least in the vehicles I've, I've had. So what I do, come in here, hammer here, hammer here, hammer the other side, I'll stop right there and I'll tell you with the Toyota Avalon your results would vary right however thankfully again awesome design Toyota has or whoever the aftermarket would be for this as well because I, yeah, I don't know if this is an original uh, rotor they have these threaded holes over here two of them and where, where would I have the light so it's not interfering? Okay, so you've got two of these, and the thread, uh, the thread uh, for, for those holes is, excuse me, metric eight eight by one point two five. So just get some bolts, thread them in, save you from hammering. And the ones I got do have 12 millimeter heads. Obviously, get whatever you you need to, and then just turn. That's good. I like that. You see that? Came off. No fighting. No hammering, no damaging your bearings by hammering this and that. Okay, so that's it. And the two threads that I had, the two bolts uh, got here and here. And this is your, your hub, your bearing, right? So let's look at the... This is the rotor that came off. You can see the grooves in there. You can see some rust. And yes, you can see where the pads topped, but generally, man, it seems like it's had a pretty rough life. Oh, look at the backside. Yeah. I think in some cases you can actually see a crack. No, this one's not very clear. It's all right. So, anyway. I had already seen the grooves and that's what had kind of made my mind up about replacing these. So I'll set that off to the side. I do have replacement parts and I'll talk about these parts in a bit. I uh, just wanted to kind of show the removal process and why, why we use certain tools. So I guess while here I'll talk about the pads as well. Look at the pads. Pretty grooved, right? Groovy is good, but now when you're talking about brake components, right? <laughs> yeah, so I'll set this off to the side and once again, I'll change the the camera angle so that you can see the actual work I'm doing. Let's talk about part numbers. 
hawk-eyed people might have noticed that I have a stash underneath here. And we'll talk about it in, in a bit. Let's go to this right here. This is a replacement rotor or brake disc as some people call them. This one here is a Duralast Gold brand. I like the Duralast Gold because I buy this from AutoZone and it comes with a three-year warranty which is pretty good for rotors. I mean hopefully you don't mess up your rotors that badly but if something happens you can take them back and it's a lot of work yeah but at least the part cost will be taken care of. This is why sometimes it just makes sense to pay somebody to do to you know pay somebody to do your brakes and as long as they offer labor right as long as they offer a warranty sorry so that when you need to get your brakes readdressed in, in case someone screwed something up they cover it yeah you don't have to pay anything else but when you do this yes you do have a warranty in this but no one pays for your time right so just wanted to mention that the part number that I have is 4458 2DG. There you go. So why do we have the light to be able to see this? Can you see that? 4458 2DG. I'm gonna put it in the um, in the video description as well, so just don't worry about it if you can't see it yet. It's gonna come back. A screwdriver is an all-purpose tool. <laughs> Whoa, there you go. Zinc coated, I believe. Actually comes with a little card in here. Do less gold rotor. So let me turn off the light so you can kind of read this. There you go, Duralast Gold. I'll, I'll read it for you, I'll tell you. It says the zinc, the Z-clad coating will be removed by the pad friction material when the brakes are applied. The Z-clad residue will not adhere to your brake pads. The non-braking surfaces will remain protected after the braking process. Limited noise is possible during the braking process. So basically, they're saying this is it. This is what it looks like, all black. Don't worry about scraping it off or whatever. Your brake pads will scrape off whatever they need to. And don't worry about it either because it's not gonna affect your braking efficiency. That's what they're saying. So some people do like to go through the trouble of cleaning these, spraying them with chemicals. I don't. and. Nothing's ever happened to me. The only thing you have to make sure is that you don't like put extra chemicals on it, right? Extra mess, I guess. Um, so for here, what I do is, I do have like some sandpaper. Usually I come at it with a, with a brush and I don't have my wire brush right now. I, I, I don't know, I've not been able to find it. This is your uh, brake dust shield, by the way. I did mention it in the beginning, right? Sometimes the videos are so long, I must start like reiterating or talking about things I've talked about already. So forgive me if that happens. Um, if you have sandpaper, I'd like to do that. Just go over it a little bit. This is just to make sure that I'm not installing a nice, new pad on top of rust and corrosion you want it to adhere to, you want it to be mounted on a surface as smooth as possible so i do that and maybe this again sometimes i you know i come here with a brake clean but it just depends it just depends on how long how much time i have to let it sit but for now this is going to be good enough all right so by the way uh, before I talk about that, I just wanted to show. So this is these are the brake pads I use, and I'll talk about the brake pads in a little more detail. But if you don't have sandpaper, the wrap, 
the, it's a loose wrap where the brake pads come in. I usually use them sometimes as like a scuffing agent. Listen to that, right? It's like fine sandpaper. <laughs> so I've also used these in the past. And let me bring the camera here just so I can show what I'm trying to do. All I'm doing, you see that, is like scuffing up the, the area in between the studs just so that when these guy, when, when you mount this guy on, right, you can see the five holes, that everything matches pretty decently, right? So that's, that's the whole purpose. That's the whole reason I'm doing all that. And what I usually do, I'm going to go ahead and get some anti-seize and apply the anti-seize over here this spot, this spot, this spot, and this spot. So you'll be able to see, the camera might just catch one angle, but I wanted to at least tell you, speak, and explain what I'm doing first. Um, I use anti-seize, um, I guess, because I have it. <laughs> it's supposed to help fight whatever was going on, the reason I had to hammer and also thread, you know, use the the bolts to back up back the the rotor from the hub so i just use that it's like a, an anti-rust protectant i don't use too much of it just a little bit it's uh, out of habit you don't want to coat it too thick because believe it or not these things usually end up affecting the mounting the flatness that i so, i was so worried about if you go too crazy you end up affecting how flat you, you're mounting your stuff so and just apply a little bit, not too crazy with this, in this case. I did my best to like dry the brush and then I'm just going over it. So the brush, the brush wasn't too loaded. So this is anti-seize that I'm using. What's not showing? Can you see this part? Yeah. The video looks a little interesting, I guess. I was curious if I ended up scoring something over. It's fine, I guess. All right, so let's, let's zoom in. Okay, anti-seize out. What I'm gonna do now is come up with this, lift it up. And by the way, this one also has the, the threaded holes. And I suppose it would be prudent for me to ensure that it's the same. See that screw up right there? You don't want that on your contact surfaces. But I do want to ensure that. Yep, same thread. So in case I needed to remove these, I can get these bolts that I'll store somewhere. Just so I can have them handy for my Toyota service. I do have like a bucket of spares though, so. Okay, so do my best to do this, and this is the reason people usually end up spraying chemicals on their on their stuff because you end up touching it with so many different things. There you go. So it's a little loose to hold it there. I'm gonna employ the use of a lug nut. Doesn't have to be tight, just enough to hold it there. I can get another one for the top if I wanted to, but it's good enough. All right, so that's the that's the easy part. Um, I think it's all done. I said I could get some chemical for it. I'm usually pretty good about not messing it up, but. For time like this, and sometimes people go on the other side. Look, it will burn off, by the way, over time. Don't you know? Don't freak out about that. All right, so let's talk pads. But first, let me make sure I've got decently clean hands. Pads. I buy Duralast Gold pads for one. It's the same reason where you get. Um, a lifetime warranty hypothetically they say if they wear I think the thing is if they wear 
way earlier than they're supposed to. You're supposed to be able to take, you know, go back and say, hey, I need new pads. But, and the number is DG1293. If the number is not coming out clearly, don't worry about it. I will have it in the video description. So, pads. And this is them. I made sure that they look what they're supposed to. Similar on both sides, right? So you don't really have like one dedicated. And the bottom here is where you put your and your wear indicator clips, but since I don't have them, I'm not gonna bother with that. Look at how much thicker they are compared to these other ones, right? At least these ones wore evenly, and that's usually a good sign that your slide pins and everything are working properly. So when you buy these, remember those clips I was talking about? The ones that go on um, on your bracket? So you usually get these clips. When you buy the Duralex Gold Pads, they usually come with those cl uh, clips that you need. Other brands or other models of the brake pads might not come with them. You probably need to buy them separately. But as I said, if you do loop the ones you have, you might be able to reuse them. These clips are what I'm talking about, right? And make sure you do I mean, when you buy them, make sure you get the proper arrangement, proper layout, because some of them are left clips, some of them are right clips. And these ones here I've already divided in half between the right side and the left side, so everything you're seeing here is half as much as I usually get. All right, so clips got them, and then that's the number that it will be in there. But you can buy the... Do they call them... Bra you know, the thing about shopping, especially in, um, for brake parts, like some things are called clips, uh, brackets, uh, what else? Just kits. So you, you have to really know what you're looking for. It's just very easy for me to buy the, the Duralist gold, uh, gold parts. And what warning do they give you here? Caliper abutment clips. That's what they say. Or abutment, I guess. Depends on where you're from. So, the, the diagrams are wrong. Don't even listen to this. The drawings are a little wrong. As I said, when you get like eight of these in, in, you know, sorry. When you get eight of these clips in your box, sometimes you might think like, yo, uh, did I get extra of this or that? But it ends up working out, in, you know, ultimately. Okay, so another thing that I usually get this one is more on the brake, um, on the on the bracket. Remember the the boots I was talking about for the slide pins. This is it. I usually have to buy these separately. The number here is one six one five three. I don't know if that's all the way clear. One six one five three. Again, if you're not, if you can't see it, uh, please pardon me, but I will put it in the uh, in the description. For this one, just like I showed you actually get three parts and that's how you have to make sure I guess when you get the bag that you get it with six parts I, as I said I've already divided between uh, right and left and here you get the lower accordion piece the boot you get another one for you know the lower pin or the upper pin doesn't matter then you get this small one here All right can you see it? There's a, there's a third one. So this is pretty much all we need. And with all this time that I've been taking a break, I guess, talking, I'm gonna now go back to my bracket here and make sure it's good, make sure it's ready. So let's do this. So I'm gonna lift the bracket again. Start with the, with the light. spills yet. Okay, so I'm going to rinse it out again, just make sure everything came out okay. It's spraying out cleaner. Or rather, whatever's coming out is much cleaner now. I 
I don't know if I mentioned this, but usually these come with a little straw. The straw is usually attached to the body, so just take it out and put it in here. It helps direct the spray exactly where you need it to. And then I'm going to clean up the top. Uh-oh. Sometimes if I want to know if this thing is well cleaned, I get the upper slide bin. Bottom out. I think, no, that was not a bottomed out because that was actually the, the lower one. Sometimes they make a difference. So remember why I mentioned that sometimes you can just turn them upside down? It kind of matters. So this was the top one, right? The one with the engraving. Look at how this slide bin goes. That's how much gap you get right all the way in compare with what it does at the bottom that's how much gap you get so it, it does matter and it would be nice to pay attention as to what direction you install your your slide bins are you in what direction you install your slide bins otherwise you'd have problems if you install this one here and you can't even you know bottom you can't even put your caliper on because it's gonna be too too far out so just things to pay attention to but this one's coming out all clean, I'd say. Did a pretty good job. There's a little bit of a little bit of dirt or whatever, but And while I have this one here, I'm also going to go this extra step of cleaning the surface is where I mount those clips. You could sand it down, and I have in the past, but this is not going to be a contact surface, so... Okay, let's say we can retire this one. Bring the other one in. It had its own a spray thing I don't know what one to but when I noticed that it was missing I just decided to get the one from the first spray bottle uh, clean this surface well that's different right brake clean is supposed to be quickly you know easily evaporating that good get a spray I'm gonna have to try this again inside here just in case Wow as I said it is it's a pretty strong chemical and I don't know if you'll be able to see it but it's usually like if I play with brake clean for too long it will eat the melt the rubber or chemically burn the rubber okay so this is going on uh, in a bit I'll be talking about lube I've got like three different lubes that I use but right now what I want to do just clean this up a little bit so depending on how soon in the process you clean this up you might be able to get away with just letting it air dry. Look at that, right? Sometimes though, I'm forced to use my compressed air to aid in the process. Again, things, you know, it's a chemical that evaporates pretty fast, so it should be able to go away pretty soon. Okay, while this one is drying, I'll set this off here. I'm gonna get the slide pins. Do them as you please. You can do them like wet the wet a napkin and do it, or just spray them. Would it be nice? Would wouldn't it be nice if I was doing this break here? Cause like it would be such a nice view. But hey, 
making the best of the situation. Right now, I'm just making sure I wipe this collar right here because this is what helps prevent um, contaminants from intruding into the or getting into the the smooth the board, smooth uh, part of the slide pin. Making sure everything's good. These ones are good, and I'll, I guess, let them dry as well. It, right now, what I'm about to do is reassemble the uh, the caliper bracket, and the caliper will be coming up pretty soon. So these are the parts that, if I were to do a, a video, a typical how-to video, I'd skip through the process. Just maybe speed speed the process of the video up like eight times or sometimes 16 you know just show that this is what I'm doing but it's taking much longer because I'm actually doing the exact process as I go through it and I have zero regrets about it right just so you guys know I enjoy doing what I do if anything by the way this really helps me because for like if a, if the process was one hour think about think about it that means I've, I've done the work for about an hour and then I, I download the video into the into the computer and I have to watch it for a minimum of another hour to to determine where to chop up videos and where to speed up and things like that and then I have to watch the whole thing again so for something that I work that took me one hour to do I'm gonna put like two and a half to three hours of total work to get that video out to you in you know to make it a 30 minute video or something like that it depends it really depends I just as I said I wanted to do this as a different kind of video uh, to show you the process from the beginning to the end alright so you've noticed I haven't called it out but you're using a lot of paper towels right okay so come to lube and these these rubber pieces First thing I do, well, let me put these down first. Since I'm assembling now, it's time to get cleaner gloves. If you've been watching me for any length of time, you know uh, we get creative around here. Because money doesn't grow on trees, right? Okay, just switch them over. Suddenly, whatever was on the outside is on the inside, and yeah, that's how you get two uses out of your pair of gloves. <laughs> there you go. Dirty, clean, clean, dirty-ish. All right, so now we're going to talk about lube, but before that, let's work on this pin here. Get the little grommet, little rubber thing, and just push. It doesn't give you too much of a fight. I think the rear one was much tighter, but that's it. All right, we're good here. So, a little difference in length, as you can see there, right? And you have to make sure, just make sure you mental note, mark it, whatever it is you gotta do, masking tape, paint pen, just remember what side is up. So, this is up for me, I know that for sure this is down it's kinda harder to insert with no lube but just for work with me right for the sake of keeping the video moving so what I need to do right now there are like three different kinds of lubes that I use for this and for the slide pins the lube that I use is called Sail Glide. it is like a I call it a Vaseline Vaseline type look at that right it's like Vaseline so that's what I'll use here but from experience I'll tell you that um, this one here this uh, rubber boot as I said you have to kind of pay attention to how you install them right how you insert them because this is not gonna work it's not gonna hold do you notice that I had to kind of fight it on the way out so I'll be pushing this into the into the recess over here but let me set it aside for now what I like to try to do is send as much well not 
too, not too crazy with it, but send a um, liberal amount of grease down these holes. So I'll do this. Put it on the tip. Push it in there. A little bit came out, not too much. Put more on the tip, push it in there. Sometimes it's like an air pocket, but just keep going. Like three times usually gets, you know, gets me moving. Is usually good enough for me. Okay, let's do the same for the bottom one. You know this one is working because it bottoms out, right? So this grease right here can be used all over, but especially for the slide pin, I like to use the semi-clear stuff. Okay, so that's good. That's part one. So the next thing I like to do is install the, the rubber boots. And what I do is I, look at that hook it over. It can almost sit, but I have to squeeze it to just make sure it's small enough, get there, and it's, yeah, perfect. Sometimes if I lube the area, I'll be able to spin this, but obviously this time it didn't work. And here's the other one. I could get some lube, I guess. Then you'll see that spinning thing I was talking about. Yep, not today either. It's all right. Good enough. So there you go. That's that's it, right? I could tell again from the bottoming out that this is the top side. So what I do is get a little more off on the sides. So if you don't want to buy this whole tub, I think this was like seven dollars. Usually when you when you go to buy your brake um, brake parts, they uh, they try to sell you this little packet of um, of um, brake grease. That's usually good enough to use anywhere, but for the uh, per unit cost, much rather just buy this. I do enough brake jobs that it makes sense to just have it in, in bulk. So now I'm just pushing this. I might not have tried it here, but I'll tell you that it's much harder to send this in when it's dry. You saw what how hard it was for the the other pin to go in there. Yeah, this this thing is really tight. The other side of the of the boot, it's really tight. Okay. Then I get a little more. Okay. Just spin it on the way in. If I complete this step, We'll get a little messy, so I'll skip it just for now. But we'll be back. So remember how hard it was to go in, but it's, look at that. <laughs> Too bad I can't, like, there's no way to convey in video how much effort I'm putting to, to, to do that. So just loop the whole shaft shank. do this look at that win lube's important right <laughs> and so you can almost hear the what you call it the air pockets being expelled that's why it sounds like it's farting a little bit and thankfully this is really tight, but now I can't play with it too much longer. I'm gonna have to just like make this the last run because I can't keep forcing it out. I'm weakening the the system. Okay, let me cap this. 
again for safety in case you guys have noticed that I cap a lot of my stuff it's just I don't know things happen okay so now I want this to be able to slide back and forth and what I do so there's two things you're trying to do one is I hold this up because if I don't hold it it's just gonna push it and it's gonna collapse inwards right so I push this up and hold it down like this and I'll explain why I'm holding it down. The holding it down will serve two purposes. One, it'll keep the collar extended. So you can just push this over. There you go. Perfect. Then just push down. Do you see the bulge over here? Yeah, that's you still have an air pocket. So what I do is I push, then pull it back again. It further, but not too much. Sometimes, like, it might give me trouble now, but it wouldn't really have any other option when, when I do this during, um, when putting the caliper on. Okay, so let's do this again. This is the part I said might get messy, right? Just touching the grease with the lube. That was quick. So, and so down them together this way. There you go. So this thing is almost ready for reinstallation, but that's not the only loop point. So here, remember those clips that we'll install here? I have another kind of loop that I use for that. I did give the number for that, right? 16153. Okay. This other lube is like, I call it RTV type uh, grease. It's CRC brand, synthetic brake and caliper grease. This one I like to use for metal to metal contact surfaces, but in reality, it goes everywhere. It's just that it's so messy that I my preference is not to use it everywhere. I just use it in the, I guess, heavy duty usage places. According to, according to me, I guess I'm getting more confident that I can apply this all over because I just don't want to keep opening the the jar again. But usually in the past, I just do this for the bottom, then the top, separately. But as I said, I'm. Let's begin pretty confident with this. This stuff, as I said, it's it's kind of messy, this black goop, but when it comes to brake system lubricants and greases, it is amazing. It's water repelling um, properties are really, really great. Um, if I could, would I have bought the Vaseline type? Uh, yeah, kind of, if they had it when I did, when I was looking, but they didn't have anything else and I needed something to keep moving, so I just bought this. In retrospect, I guess I could have bought the little Vaseline ones, but sometimes I'm so fixated on, on value for money and unit cost purchases that I make decisions like this. Okay, so here, I'm looking for those clips. Oh, what do you know? At the bottom, in the bag down there, you do have the, what do you call them? The brake pad um, wear indicators. I don't know if I'm gonna use them, honestly. Seeing as to how they're corroded, it's, it's one of those, like, if you want to, you could, but my preference, since I watch my stuff, I don't sit there waiting till my brake pads squeal at me to know that it's time to replace them. You know, so I don't know if I'll use them, but we'll we'll get to it. I'll explain that in a bit. I was more fixated on the brackets for now. Okay, so as I said, this is towards the inner side, so like this. And one of these clips is straight, the other one is curved, if you can see that. 
one of the legs is straight, the other one is curved. So I go with a straight leg first, which is usually the inside in this case, and then push the curved one over. Okay, there you go. That's in. Oh, came out clean, nice. I wouldn't sweat this one too much because I'm going to loop the top side as well. So you don't really need to like worry too much about it looking clean. Is this like the same one? No, a little different. Yeah, I could put it down here. Oh, sorry. Pretty, pretty simple. Two others. Some some um, brackets usually, or clips or whatever you want to call them, usually come as continuous. So just one for the top, one for the bottom. But nope, not so it's luck today to do it in steps. Push down. So as you've seen, it's got like one, two, three, four, five contact surfaces. That's why I was lubing up the whole area. And now before I fully put this together, let me explain something. So just like I was protecting the the uh, the brake rotor. I don't want, you know, the surface right here, not wanting it to get the RTV and stuff, the grease. I need to do the same for the brake pads themselves, right? So I'll, I guess I'll just hold them together so I don't touch something wrong. Okay, remember the clips I was talking about earlier where the wear indicators, they're supposed to, let me install one and then I can talk about it. Sometimes people use it like just one pad. Sometimes they use it for just the inner one because the inner one usually wears a little more. Whichever one you end up installing on the inner side. Uh, this one here, the way you install these, all right, see this, all right? Sorry, see this right here, the shape. I guess this makes, I don't know if this makes a case with black gloves, but I think this one actually works better. So you wanna install it this way and usually just push in, all right? I'm not gonna push it all the way, but when you push this in, there's a dimple here. There's a dimple that's supposed to take this. Once you, once you have it in your hand, honestly, you can't miss it, but so this is what you do. You install it there, and then it will have this poking towards the inside, towards the inside that way. And then the whole point is that if this if this pad, this wear material is um, so low that you, start, you know, that this one is protruding, sticking out a little farther than the wear material, this one is going to start scratching your rotor, and then that's when you usually hear that screeching noise. But from experience and from what you've seen from these other pads, right? If you sit around waiting for a wear indicator for some piece of metal to scrape your rotors, man, it's too late. Because as you can see, these ones have a lot of flesh, but the rotors and pads were already so worn. Personally, my, my preference when it comes to such things is that I check my rotors and pads, my brake system quite often, um, maybe 10,000 miles. I, I go a little crazy sometimes, honestly, because I do have my uh, temperature gun and I use my temp gun to check the, at least a check from left to right whenever I brake. The front side might be a little hotter than the rear side because the front side is, you know, holds more of your brake pressure. And as a totally different topic, ABS systems, they're so smart sometimes it can even out pressures, but let's not talk about that part. I'm just talking about whenever I use my brake, 
I want to make sure that the right side and the left side are pretty much the same temperature. So sometimes I check and things like that. But I think I'll do a like a break nerd video one uh, sometime later for now. I just wanted to say that when you buy, again, when you buy the Duralast Gold uh, pads, I found these at the very bottom which is just as well because I did not intend to use them. I'm sorry if I didn't call them out initially. Oh, so here, as you can see, I, I mentioned that the purpose of those clips that I put in was to enable these to slide, right? So at this point, what I need to do is this. The basic function, and that kind of helps you think about it, right? So the way you install these is that this is inside, this is towards the center of the wheel. So you have to make sure that whenever you install them, that these, the curvature will be like this, right? So you can either do it like this, or you can do it like this, but either way, the curve should be on the outside, right? And remember these holes, remember those um, spring clips I was talking about? If you install them the wrong way, you it, it, it won't take you too long to notice because there are no holes on the other side, right? Some brake pads usually are like straighter, but not these guys. All right, so, oh, maybe what I can tell you is that the ears are on the outside, right? So the gist, the main goal of what you're trying to do is this. And I'll, I guess I'll kind of talk about it. Thankfully with Toyota's design, you can kind of do it. You can insert this straight up straight on like this and then once you're there just squeeze and turn well if it works <laughs> maybe the other way works better there you go look at that pretty simple right so that's pretty much what you need to do and then these will slide back and forth they don't slide very well right now and they will not until I intervene in some way. So, being that this is metal to metal contact, I go for the goop again. Man, even just scooping it out does not look good at all. Best way to explain what I'm doing. If it's metal, it's getting the lube. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we already talked about what I'm going to do, so just do the thing. Using the slide through method helps me, like, make sure I don't fight with too many things. But. And the inner side is usually a little trickier because of this arm right here. The other side is not too bad. I have to make sure as I hold it, I don't push it from the other side. So you certainly don't need, need um, gloves per se, but helps you a great deal. All right, so I think I'm getting really close to the end. I'm gonna switch the, the viewing angle again so I can reinstall stuff in there. And I need to remember the way I did it. I said that this was the bottom, right? Yeah, it is the bottom. It should work, but I usually like to check. So I think that's the bottom. I'm gonna check this one here. I can already feel it, it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. So these can slide. They're not like rigid in one place. They can slide as needed, but they're not too loose either. 
and it's not like I have like a huge air pocket in there that it's just pushing it back out. We're getting really close. There's gonna be another lube that I'll introduce, but I'm not gonna mess with it right now yet. Okay, set this down. You can stand it on edge. As I said, real video, man. If anything happens, you're seeing it all. Top, bottom. Let's zoom out a little bit. Yep. Okay, so... <laughs> remember what we did for removal? Installation is basically the opposite of removal, the reverse of removal. So... Get this. And, <clears throat> excuse me, slide it over. Remember, the threading happens on the, uh, the bracket itself. So slide this over. It's wide enough to allow it to go th over the, the calipers. And hand thread it. To start off at least. Some, some people use anti-seize over there, but I don't. I just want to mention that because it is, you could, maybe you'll see other people do it that way. Or maybe you might prefer, or maybe you were taught to always use anti-seize whenever anything is going on. You know, Eastern, Eastern United States folk with rust everywhere. And I guess I shouldn't be one to speak because I'm in the Midwest and get a fair share of rust as well, but... Remember that's a 17 millimeters and you see it straightening up. So this is a part where you get your torque wrench and get the proper torque values, but since I am telling you to do as I say and not do as I do, just ignore the fact that I'm not using a torque wrench here and just cranking back. Usually I say, if you do this till you're lifting the vehicle, yeah. Thankfully those are some beefy bolts you're not gonna like send them out. So, there's some systems that I don't mess with, I don't take a chance with, vibrational systems. In my experience though, these usually are pretty good. I have heard of people like having the bolts fall off, you know, if you, if you let them loose or lost them, but usually this is not a, it's not, it doesn't undergo that type of use where it's vibrating itself that badly, right? Rotational parts sometimes do. So my experience and my understanding of such systems Pretty decent, right? As I said, it's all it's all live, so whatever you see here is whatever the job is gonna be. I'm not doing any extra. Alright, so can we see the caliper? Can we see the caliper now? Here. I'll lower it. So like I showed earlier, right? You'll notice that the distance here is now a lot thicker. You got thicker, thicker pads, slightly thicker uh, rotor. So this distance right here in the in the piston, it's not gonna work. Um, and that's why you need to depress it back. At this point, I'll tell you that sometimes people usually add uh, brake fluid in the brake reservoir in case the seat go low. But brake fluid, remember, brake fluid level is just a response to this. If this piston comes out more and more, basically more brake fluid is coming here. 
if it sticks out further because your pads are getting thinner and thinner, more fluid is coming here. And that means less fluid is left up there in the reservoir. So if you were one of those people that instead of addressing your brake pads, decided to just add brake fluid, remember that when you push this back, you need to remove Well, kind of killed my mojo there. <laughs> How's that? Okay, that'll work. Remember, will it? I don't know. So just remember that when you push this piston back, you need to pay attention to the top as well and uh, go back up there and remove some brake fluid from your reservoir so that you don't over overflow the reservoir. So that's just something I wanted to mention. So at this point, some people use C flints. Thankfully, this one is a cup. You know, you can just put your um, C-clamp in there and find something on the back, usually the bolt, and push through. But C-clamps, I mean, you know how to use a C-clamp, right? This is it. Oh, yeah, this will work. A C-clamp is fast, efficient, but let's talk about cool tools. This one here is called a brake spreader, usually for pistons. And right now it's in the not spreading position. It's just ratcheting, but it needs uh, force, right? Because if I do this, no ratcheting at all. But if I grab it and squeeze to it, it ratchets. What I do is come here, then flip this ratchet on the other side. You have it here and you have it on the other side as well. So it works from either direction. So I'll squeeze here just to give it some resistance. And now I'm going the other direction. I like using this because it's parallel and kind of puts equal force for, especially for systems that have multiple pistons. This one is a single piston, yeah. But sometimes you get a system with two pistons, three pistons. So I'm just pushing till Kind of use your own discretion. Don't push it. I don't do it until it's like all the way against the piss until it can't move because that's how you end up squeezing the rubber. This is like a rubber boot over here. But thankfully, again, Toyota design, they have a, a um, like an, a protrusion here that protects you against squeezing too much. So let me just, I can bottom out basically is what Toyota is telling me. You'll see like it won't be able to move any further. There you go. I've hit the bottom. All right. So do this, ratchet it back to be able to remove it. Hopefully you can see this. All right. So the cup is all the way in, right? But see this lip right here? There's a gap. See, this is all metal. Then this right here, it's still rubber, then metal, right? Yeah, Toyota, man. Pretty, pretty great, and I might have mentioned this in a in a different video, but in industry we we talk about something called the Toyota way, just with regards to the industrial efficiency practices and things like that. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I wouldn't use sandpaper for this, but I, I'm just gonna brush it down to knock off some of the dirt, and then you could either do it. Make sure again you pay attention to your many different ways you turn this thing well let's hook it up here again so if you remember the way the piston was um, installed you had the piston in uh, the caliper was installed the piston was in contact with this and the outside fingers were in contact with this so what I do for this is go for my third lube Again, if you buy one type of lube, it will work, but I just happen to have so many different types and I'm trying to standardize, so that's why I'm switching lubes, but whenever you buy any brake grease, brake lube from the auto store, auto parts store, it should be sufficient for whatever job you need to do. Okay, so put this away. The third one I have is this. I bought the black one because I thought I was running out of this for whatever job I was doing. 
but I was able to straighten the brush out and you know if it's cheaper than I am kind of economical as I am let's go uh, I'm using it till till I can't anymore so just brush some on the outside here uh oh kind of went crazy over there so I'll brush it I'll wipe that off can't really see but I know where the piston came the reason I'm doing that is to uh, prevent corrosion as best as I can but like I said if I wanted to prevent corrosion what I would have gone for was a black stuff it's really really potent as far as functionality goes I guess what is this oh that's the one that came with a brake rotor paper towel sheet number who knows okay so wipe this down just a little bit looks like I turn it not now you know what how about I just open this up while I can It did not go too. It did not go too far. So, all right, that's great. That's done, right? So now, before putting this back in, this is the challenge that comes in. Remember those two return clips, return springs? Yeah, we gotta install them. But we'll get a little crafty because the purpose of these springs is to push the pads out, right? And two. Uh, I've lubed this thing, so the pads are going to be jumping out as far as possible. So let's just, um, I guess, sand these down a little bit. There's nothing really to it. Okay, so at this point, I'll explain the method to the madness in a bit. I know that I have not installed my clips here. That I do know, but I'm going to ignore that for a second. I want to do this first. Make sure I can install this. And don't get it twisted. I mean, you want the bleeder valve up top and this hose comes in from the top. This is called a banjo bolt. Okay, so. I've squeezed it to allow. Let me hook this up. This is the the slide pin up top. Remember, I said that if you wanted, if all you were doing was the brake pads, you could just do that, right? You could just remove that. So I've removed the slide pin, or rather, and I'm trying to make sure that I still have room over here. So far, so good. It can go through, but then I have to push this one. There you go. That's that's it just to make sure that everything is done properly. Okay, so this will work, right? Great, that's very important because now you're about to start fighting things and fighting time. If this wasn't working, you would, you'd have so much working against you. All right, so come here, let's install this. Experience says that you do the bottom one first. Just hold in the middle. Do this. Push it, find out the hole, and put it in there. As you can see, it wants to open up. Do the same for the top. And remember, the, when installed, these the V's kind of meet in the middle. If, you know, I guess one thing I should say is take, vi take pictures in the beginning. <laughs> All right, so if I let go right now, these are gonna spring out. <sighs> Didn't take too long to prove that, huh? Okay, there you go. They will wanna jump out, which is great because when your brakes, and your, your brakes are not applied, you want these not riding on the rotors. Now, the reason I did the top first is so that I can do this without fighting too much. As long as one tooth is on, you're fine. There you go. As I said, method to the madness. Those clips should still be there. 
Oh, well, better check. I guess I'm getting a little compulsive in this case, but, but make sure these are still on there. <laughs> uh, see, I don't, I don't know if it jumped out when I looked at it or if it just wasn't on there, but I'm glad I checked. push down <clears throat> so again as I said if I wanted proper lubrication you know protection from uh, rust and stuff I would have used the black grease but this reason this right here the fact that I have to keep interacting with this is a reason I go for the other kind of grease and at this point I mean really I could do this just as easily Apply it on the piston that you're trying to protect. Stuff is compatible with rubber as well, so no need to fret about that. So that you're not too concerned about touching it, right, and rubbing it off. Okay, so while holding this down, just swing it down. Ha! Thought I had it, guys. Have to push it in. And as long as this one catches, your money. I felt it jump again, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I felt it jump when I was doing this. it for now. I really have no idea how long it's taken. I'll look at the video in a bit. I'd say we're well past one hour, probably at one, one hour, 20 minutes now. I don't know. Try not to look at the clock while doing a perfect job. Just, just do it. So as I said, yes, it, it would go a little faster, but the time for instruction and just showing video, maybe 20, 30 minutes, I, I don't know. 15% of whatever time I'm taking is just trying to do it for, for video, right? Okay, these 14 millimeter, and I do not use a breaker bar. Again, use a torque wrench to whatever torque value is. Maybe the Toyota forums can get that answer for you. Um, personally, as I said, I'm trusting my good old instinct. So again, go to tightening mode. And since I was able to break him loose by hand, I just go for it by hand. I don't try to like lift the car off the, the you know the stand or anything. So this one here. Sometimes, for whatever reason, this other bolt might start moving the in, inner one. And obviously, it's not happening right now. But as I said, I'll try to be as thorough as possible. So if the inner bolt starts moving, 17 millimeter to hold it down and I think that's actually standard for like all uh, slide pins I've messed with it's like they're made by the same evil person 14 is 17 millimeter over there while that the outside is seven is 14 so yeah there you go and you might have seen me attempt to in the beginning I attempted to let me wipe this off first Great. In the beginning, you might have seen me attempt to slide the, the caliper. So for one, yeah, I couldn't because it was all fully compressed, but because fully the piston was fully extended, but it slides a lot better now, right? As you can see. So I think we're good here, honestly. I, I think it should be time to go ahead and put the, reinstall the, the wheel. It's shiny. I was just scared, concerned that it was squeezed. I'm just squeezing in case there's any air to come out, but it's fine. So that's it. That is your uh, Toyota 20, 2008 Toyota Avalon brake job, as according to yours truly.
So um, at this point, I guess we're all done. Everything that has been unfastened has been fed. By the way, talking of which, um, I'll tell you, uh, I'm guilty of this. I've done a project in the past and forgot to, let me, let me raise the card as I talk. Well, first, then I'll talk. wanted to say this so um, well for ease of installing the other wheel I need to turn this back I've done a pro um, I can't remember when exactly the steering wheel locked so I can't take it all the way but it's fine this is good enough I've done a project in the past and after doing all this I forgot I've realized that I'd forgotten to reinstall the uh, the rotor so it things happen don't do your projects too late at night because some silly mistakes do happen. So right now, I, I did push the other wheel back because I wanted to uh, rotate my tires. So I'm, I'm gonna do that right now. But, I mean, the video is pretty much done. If you're gonna stop at this point, I wouldn't be mad at you. It's just that I wanna keep working and I'll keep the film rolling. Um, what did I wanna talk about? I'm not 100% done with the brake project. The next big thing after installing new brakes, especially when you have new pads and new rotors, is that you want them to start wearing down at the same rate. So what that the the part the process of not ensuring that is basically a break-in period, and breaking break uh, breaking in of brakes is called bedding the brakes or burnishing the brakes, and it is exactly what it sounds like. You're just making sure that the uh, pads burn uh, a proper path or a proper pattern on your rotors so that's pretty important by the way it's uh, your brake feel is greatly improved and sometimes out of the blue i just do it on my you don't only it's not only exclusive for new uh new brake components every once in a while maybe you've been driving in water things like that i do then so i will make a video on brake bedding at least for the Avalon the, the process is the same for many cars but I'll do it as a separate video because right now once I'm done with the wheel game I'll just call it good call it a night 